Hey everyone, Irix Guy here, and I wanted to follow up and, and first say thanks everyone for your support. It's great that I know have that I have such a uh, such a such an awesome fan base out there. Not a fan base that just enjoys the videos, but a fan base that is uh, that is proactively willing to provide their uh, their support and their expertise in certain areas. Now for me, the uh, the Hollywood fame type thing is kind of, uh, it's, it's unknown territory. I mean, I'm just a small town dude and, and it's one of those things, you know, you, unless you've been in that industry and you know how it works and you know how the, uh, the agents and the agencies and the blah, 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 how all of that works, it's impossible for someone to know what they could be getting themselves into. Now, obviously from a, uh, from a business perspective, I feel that I'm somewhat well-versed and I did know that had I decided to jump upon anything, that I would definitely seek legal counsel first to ensure that it wouldn't put me in a position where I wouldn't be as rewarded as I should be. That sort of thing. So here's how it went down. And I thought it was really neat. And one of the, one of the best things, and, and I'm not going to drop any names here, and I'm I'm sure y'all are watching this, and, and I appreciate that. And I want to say thanks again for, uh, for the wonderful time, and, and it, was, it was really awesome to be, to be part of that experience. So it went down like this. It was, uh, it was a situation where I, was, where, where I met these individuals at a certain airport and went up in an airplane, so I had no idea what to expect. But as soon as I walked on that airplane, walked up, you know, the little steps come down, it didn't have to go through the normal uh, air terminal where you got to sit in the seats and then feel bad if you're on business class, first class, or, or coach, or whatever. This was a private jet. So that was kind of neat. But when you get in there, the first thing they do, they're like, uh, what do you want to drink, sir? And, and obviously, you know, I'm going uh, to have a glass of water and a, uh, and, a, and a beer as well just because I want to... You know, you don't, you don't really know what kind of situation you may be getting into. So you kind of want to have the opportunity to have a drink, but you want to have water, you know, just kind of fill it out. So did that, sat down, and then they ask what you want to eat. And they've got a menu, a custom printed menu with this airplane's name at the top of it. And it was, it was surf and turf, and it was ridiculous. It was Kobe beef. It was cold water Maine lobster. So this isn't your basic lobster. This is the, the, the top of the line lobster, just like Kobe was top of the line beef. And it was, it was an easy decision to make because I wanted both. So got the lobster, and by the way, when the, when the, uh, when the day progressed, it, it was mentioned that the, that the lobster had actually been flown down, and they mentioned the, the fishery's name and, and how it was just caught literally hours before they took the jet off from, uh, from outside of uh, Portland, Maine. It's a really interesting story, but it tasted great. That was some exceptional lobster. The Kobe beef couldn't have been better. And I've got, well, what do you want to drink, sir? You know, I had a few beers and, you know, have, having a good time, having a good meal. And there's, there's several people on this plane. And if you, if you've ever been on a, if you've never been on a private jet, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's, it's a situation where everybody's kind of able to interact with one another because ultimately these types of planes are used to conduct business. So on the plane there were multiple people. One of the people uh, was the, uh, the founder of this particular company and it was a situation where after talking to them for a while I got to know that, that this wasn't their first uh, media type company. It was, it was one of many and, and, and that, that kind of raised uh, curiosity in my mind. What was cool is that I was a, uh, <laughs> I was I was a hot commodity on the plane because obviously they had interest in me, otherwise I wouldn't have been up there. So I had on my my uh, my affordable yet uh, well actually heavily discounted suit uh, that I got from Snagbear.com, a really good site to get some deeply discounted goods, drones and clothes and socks and underwear and all that. So I had that on and you know everybody on there you know they you could tell that the that the agency they had their own tailors and and this that and the other. I mean it was it was a <laughs> it was a high profile crowd. You have no idea. But everybody was very likable. 
And that was something that I liked about it. And I mean, in the sales type business, typically people are, especially when they want something. When they want something, they're going to offer whatever, even the most outlandish uh, forward-looking statements with the hopes of of uh, accomplishing that business goal of theirs. The business goal at that point in time was obviously to to have me on board. Well, not just on board the plane, but on board this this opportunity. And I, and I realized that, and I and and still to this, I mean, to right now, I can say that it wasn't a situation where I felt like they were. It, it wasn't like a sleazy type sale. It wasn't a smooth talking sale. It wasn't like. I was being manipulated into thinking a certain way. So we all had drinks, we, had our, we enjoyed our meals, we got to know each other. And then there was someone that uh, was also on the plane that was actually, that had been doing this opportunity for several years. And, and this, is, this is what was really interesting because we all ate, cut up, and you could tell, you could tell this person they were, they were happy, but it was almost like they were, they were burnt out in a way. And I looked at them and I said, you know, insert name here, I'm not going to drop any names, but I said, are you still hungry? And then the owner of this company looked at me and he said, he said, oh, there's plenty more food. What do you want? We'll get it. And I looked at the, at the guy again and I said, not the owner, but the guy that had been doing this for a while. And I said, no, are you still hungry? And he looked at me and kind of smiled because he knew what I was, what I was saying. I wasn't wanting to take the leftovers off of his plate. I mean, obviously, this airplane had plenty of food surplus, the highest quality food that, uh, that most could imagine. I mean, Kobe beef and uh, cold water Maine lobster. How cool is that? Oh, and the shrimp cocktails are great. And they had this uh, excellently crafted cocktail sauce. It was horseradish, ketchup, Worcestershire, but they put some special stuff in there that just really made it, uh, I don't know, one of, the, one of the best meals I've ever eaten. But the, the bottom line here is that, and maybe I was in, maybe I'm incorrect with this assumption, but the bottom line is that it's, it, it obviously is a good opportunity. I mean, you don't, you don't fly private air and you don't eat meals like this and, and have the, uh, just everything that, that one would probably want from a financial perspective. It's all there, but the whole, and I'm, I'm one of these, I like to go out and dig deeply and, and find out what the, uh, what the problem is. And, and I may be incorrect with this assumption, but my understanding is that, and don't take this in a bad way, and, and if you're watching this, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that the owner hopped around a lot from company to company. So this was just, this was just a short-term interest for them, possibly. Again, it is not necessarily fact. The person that had been doing this for a while, and, and by the way, it, and I'm not going to mention who it is, but it's, it's a big shot, in my opinion, a big, big shot celebrity. And that was, I mean, that was crazy. But to see them having all this and not really being, you could tell they were, they were sincerely burnt out. And you could tell without them saying, and again, this is all speculation. Don't, don't take what I'm saying if you're watching this as being factual. But you could tell that they had been there, they've done that, they got what they wanted to get, but they were burnt out. And for that reason, yeah, the food was great, the flight was awesome, the opportunity, it, it's, it's beyond incredible. But I want something more. And for me to get what I want... I can continue to do what I'm doing. And it, it's, it's one of those situations where people that are part of something, they, they come and go. But that umbrella over their heads, it stays there, and it's usually where the recognition is. So what I'm doing is I'm creating, and I've already got it in a, at a small scale, but I'm creating my own umbrella. It's my own efforts. It's the result of my own efforts. So if it's successful, I can pat myself on the back and I can congratulate my viewers for your continued viewership, subscriptions, and sharing with others because without you, none of this would exist. But what I can also do, 
I maintain 100% creative control. I can say whatever how I want to say it. And if, if I'm talking right now in the studio and there's a big Maine Coon cat that jumps up and, and jumps on the set, that would be perfectly acceptable because that's exactly, and there it is, Sean Coonery, the big Maine Coon cat. That's exactly what I want, and that's what I deserve, is complete creative control of what I do, whether successful and or failure, whether a success and or a failure. I have 100% creative control, and it's not a power trip. It's not, it's not a power trip, but what it is is the opportunity to grow this, this Iron Skies Adventure Channel, into something more. And there's so much amazing content coming soon. I mean, we're just now starting to see consumer quality drones that are becoming more and more user friendly and more and more affordable. Who knows where the drone thing's gonna lead? There's that. GoPro's entering the drone business. It's not all drone. There's travel videos. There's other types of product reviews and unboxings that I can do. There's collaborating with other YouTube channels and helping to grow their footprint while concurrently growing mine. And all of this can be done without being, being subjected to an opportunity. Because the opportunity would be an opportunity. If, if I did not have this channel, that would be an opportunity I likely could not ignore. But it's this channel that put me on the map and enable that opportunity to exist. And not only to exist, but to come my way aggressively. And that was one of the hardest things I've, I've ever had to do, and that was, uh, and that was getting off that plane. And it, it, was, it was kind of funny because people often assume that, that things are a done deal. And, and they, you know, I shook their hands, and and it was funny because I thought they, you know, there was there was no way that that this small town dude, Irix guy, was going to uh, was going to decline that offer. I mean, I could never, I could never get anything like that on my own. But when I declined, there was a statement, and I'm trying to remember the exact quote that the. That the I was telling you the there were several other people, but it wasn't the owner; it was the owner's counterpart, and it it was something that the way he said it. I don't remember the exact words, so I'm not going to misquote. But it was something along the lines of that I was the first person that's ever refused and or respectfully declined an opportunity such as this. And hey, let's keep in touch. So that to me meant more than accepting the opportunity because what I see there is someone that's fresh to this business, someone that's learned from a mogul, and someone that will likely be in touch soon. So with that being said, I'm always open for uh, cross-promotional opportunities. If you want to, uh, to do live shows on YouTube, feel free to reach out to me. You can always reach me by way of irixguy.com. There's a contact form there. You can contact me by way of irixguy.com. But I'm going to continue to run my own show. I just, there's, there's, I put too much time, too much energy, and I am by no means burned out. And I'm not burned out because I enjoy it. It's a way to relax. It's a way to have fun. It's a way to connect with an audience. So again, thanks everyone. Just wanted to share this update, and it was, it was your feedback that played heavily upon my decision to, uh, to respectfully decline the offer. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, youtube.com forward slash guy. Actually, I think it's, see, and that's where, if I was part of something bigger, if I got the slash the wrong way, they would, they would probably complain, but see, forward slash Irix guy. So I'm here to stay and 
I'm here to stay and you haven't seen anything yet because I have some ideas that I think are going to knock the socks off of my viewers. So stay tuned and y'all have a good one.